Um, so Charles spoke to me, uh, he texted me this week saying, do you want to take Yag? And I was like, never done it before. Uh, so I was like, I wasn't too sure, but I just texted him back saying, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found out it was kind of chosen already. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're not there yeah. the week before. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was quite loyal to the Yag being there for so many weeks and then the one just week get, the one <laughs> when the streak was snapped uh, one, uh, one reason I said yes was because I might be getting a snapchat at the end from Rory so <laughs> it's good to get onto his gallery you know uh, so what I was thinking about this week to talk about it wasn't really like anything that kind of kind of spoke out to me and hey it was just something that I've been thinking about for a while um, and there's this lyric uh, this hill song desert song lyric and there's a song the lyric is refine me lord through the flames I was like I'm gonna like look into that and like what does that actually mean mm. so I was like refine that's a good start to look into so I was just kind of went on at work, Google, dictionary, refine, and like what that kind of breaks up into. So it's like processes, like a filter, cleanse, distill, and it improves. I was like, okay, that's, that's a good start. Um, so, oh no, that's a thesaurus one. So then I went onto the dictionary and it's like, removes impurities or unwanted elements from a substance or process. I was like, okay, that makes sense, like why that's in that song. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to look into the Bible and see what if there's anything about refining and where that origin is from. Mm. So, so to start off with, I was looking at a few things. Um, and then actually just today, I came across this uh, Bible verse, which is in Ezekiel. So I think we're going to read Ezekiel just for a good starter. Yeah, yeah. So this whole talk might be a bit disjointed because the whole week at work I was thinking about it quite a lot and I was scoring things out and adding stuff to it so there may not be structure but there might be uh, something to go away with. Yeah, for sure. So it's Ezekiel 22 and it's verse 18 to 22. Yeah. <clears throat> so, how are we going to do this? Should we have us read? Yeah. Who wants to read it? Do you want me to read it? I think you should nominate someone. Um, hmm. What's the, what's the verse again? 18. 18 to 22. Sarah, do you want to read it? Okay. <laughs> I said to their children in the wilderness, do not follow the statues of your parents or keep the laws or defile yourself with their idols. I am the Lord, your God. Follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Keep my Sabbath holy that they may be a sign between us. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. But the children rebelled against me. They did not follow my decrees. They were not careful to keep my laws, of which I said, the person who beats them will live by them. And they dis... What? Is that the right Is it wrong? Chapter 22, 22, 22. 22. 22. I was 20, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's still powerful. I was like, the message is really off. I'm not going to have a message. Try it again. Okay, thank you, Rod. 22, I think we all just got it wrong. I know. Look at this. Son of man, the people of... Israel have become trust to me. Um, all of them are the copper, tin, iron, and lead left inside a furnace. 
they are but the dross of silver. Therefore, therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Because you have all become dross, I will gather you into Jerusalem. A silver, copper, iron, lead and tin are gathered into a furnace to be melted with a fiery blast. So will I gather you in my an anger and my wrath and put you inside the city and melt you. <coughs> I will gather you and I will blow on you with my fiery wrath and you will be melted inside the, her. As silver is melted in furnace, so you will be melted inside her, and you will know that I, I the Lord, have poured out my wrath on you. Okay. Um, yeah, so this, uh, so this whole sort of like being put into a furnace is quite a, like it's quite a daunting sort of thing to think about how you will be like put under so much heat and like melt the melting process and how. Mm. I was like, how is this like? I was like, how is this like a good sort of thing? Mm. Um, so a little background I was trying to look at uh, before we got here in Ezekiel is that um, Israel had turned away from God, um, and they were idolizing other people, and they were just doing terrible things. And I think God kind of just got a bit fed up. And he kind of brought this upon them and said, uh, I'm going to put you in, uh, I'll put you into the furnace. So I was like, what does this actually mean? So the dross is kind of like the dirt. So like the metal goes into the furnace and that kind of heats everything down and all the like dirt and the byproducts, which and the stuff you don't want gets kind of taken away. So I kinda, that's kind of like a picture of people going in into the furnace to get their sort of like impurities away and their all their dirt and what what's been going on in this sort of a time in with the Israelites. Um, mm. And another thing he says, uh, where is it? Sorry, I think it's something to do with on on notice. Has anyone got that in there? version. I think it's near the start. What does it say, sorry? It's, it's the same something like on notice. I was looking at different versions, so I might have written it down. Okay. Um, but it was just kind of like... I've got that it was kind of like um, a message, like yeah, God's message yeah. came, to, came to me. So it's kind of like kind of like a warning. It's kind of saying to him, just look at yourself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh before like I put this wrath of fire onto you um, and also I'm just kind of doing bits of the sort of verse and breaking it up um, and he says assemble you in Jerusalem so he assembles as a whole um, and Jerusalem's kind of the furnace and that's where he kind of it's kind of like a judgment sort of for everyone there and he'll like refine the whole sort of city and you'll just get rid of all the bad stuff mm. and you'll clean and purify everything else um, and also he says all these different types of metals and so he's got like copper, silver iron, lead and they're all different to each other, they've got different worths um, they've got different uses and they just get put into the furnace as one so I think that's kind of God's message, message saying all you different sort of people, like higher up, lower up, you just get put into this furnace together. Um, it doesn't matter, it's just going to be a clean slate <clears throat> of how it's like you've got iron and silver, two different things. Silver's more like a more precious to iron. You know, I think that uh, it's kind of like showing how powerful God is that He can just, like, it doesn't matter where you are, like, how much money you've got, what position you're in, it's like he's got full control over everything mm -hmm. and he can just put you straight into this furnace and just uh, get rid of all the all the dross as he says. And then at the end it says well one of the pastors says he says, Oh that should get through to you. Um as in 
you're saying to someone, uh, he's like, no matter, like, it's such a severe thing, because it's so severe, that should, like, that should get through to you other than anything else that he can do. It's such a intense sort of thing that he's going putting you through. Um, and if that doesn't get through to you, then there's probably a problem, because it's kind of quite obvious what he's mm. doing. Um, so yeah, he was just uh, it was just that verse that I kind of came across today. Um, but another point is that he's not kind of he's not kind of wiping us out when he puts us into this furnace. Um, it's kind of a time to identify the impurities, and uh, he leaves all he leaves us pure at the end, and. He's in control of this situation, so uh, he he's got the power to completely wipe us out. But I think he's just doing this as like a test. Um, so on to the next. It's just a small little passage. Uh, mm. it's Isaiah forty-eight, and it says, "I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction." So it was this furnace of affliction that I was kind of interested in. Uh, affliction meaning pain, suffering. Um, we're put into the furnace for a reason, uh, whether we like the sound of it or not. Um, but again, it's not a punishment that he's putting us in, it in for. It's kind of like a test of our faith. And um, he also states that he's refined us like silver in the furnace, but not quite like silver, because I was reading into it and like the refining process is quite powerful for silver. Um, it's very rough, and but God wants to kind of take care, um, take more care in a different way because we're much more valuable than silver or any other thing that goes into it. Um, and a little phrase that I saw was that the trials are not destructive but constructive, um, and it's again kind of refining you and getting those impurities out. And I was like, what does that actually mean? Um, and they're just to bring out the more, most important parts of us. Um, we draw closer to him and understand that he is in, in control. Uh, no matter how cruel it may seem, uh, we need to understand that he's done this for a reason. It brings out our faith, it brings out, out connecting with him and uh, praying more with him and telling people about him so that we understand God's reasoning a bit more. And uh, if we know how powerful he can be and like what he can actually do um do we want to see that happening to other people um so i think uh, just like understanding what it is um let's move on uh yeah so as they're like refining us, it's a uh, kind of it's to make us more like Jesus in a way, like to make us more pure. Um, they're put through it to shape us and mold us. Um, and I was just wondering if it's like a continuous process or not. Um, I was gonna gonna open it up for discussion if it's like a if you think it's like continuous or it's more kind of just. You're in, you're out, and that's you mm -hmm. done. You know, it's dark, but I'm kind of, I, I get the idea of a samurai sword. It, it's like the, the way they used to make swords were they had whatever you're making it from, like an iron bar. They stick it in the furnace until it's slightly melted. Flip it over so that it's sitting on top of itself, so you fold it over and then hit it a few times. And then they kept doing that over and over and over. And the reason the Japanese swords were so brilliant was because they did it 400 odd times. Mm -hmm. And each time they did it, it got better, it got stronger, it got it basically better. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's the same idea. It, it gets better a little bit each time, and then it goes back in the furnace and comes out the next bit, and then the next bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, that, I was going to, exactly what I was going to say about that. Um, no, 
I was thinking about a samurai sword like throughout the week as well. Like the more it goes in and the more it gets tested and trialed, I think as you said, like the more like precious it becomes, the more stronger it becomes. And uh, I think in this passage it's quite it's quite an extreme way to handle a whole situation that's the whole city getting put through this. Um, but it's like, how do we look at this in like everyday sort of things? Mm-hmm. Um, that it may be a struggle to us uh, as a hindrance. Do we think it's a hindrance or do we think it's something that God's put in place for us to be tested? Like, like I mean, you had an argument with someone at work. It's like, is that being put there to test us? Um, like, after that situation, I was like, I know that's the wrong thing to do. Mm. And I think if that comes up again, you know... Because you've been through that process, you know what the right thing is to do, and I think uh, God puts these sort of things, puts us in these positions just to kind of purify us a wee bit more. And um, I mean, like the, the things that I'm talking about, it's like earthly things, like things, body bereavements, domestic, like all these factors are like a daily thing. And uh, through the grace of God, he allows us to see these struggles as an opportunity rather than a burden. Um, I think for me, being injured for like a whole year, it's, I've been able to go to Alpha on a Wednesday when I would be playing football, um, and that's helped me loads. Um, and I think like these are all things that God are doing to you just to kind of like understand it a wee bit more how he's in control and like um sometimes I'd be like, Oh I'm injured again, like this is annoying. But it's like, oh uh, I can go do something else instead. And you don't really think about it at the time but you think, Oh, once you look back to all these things you're like, Oh, okay. I was able to do this because this happened and stuff. Um if that makes sense. Mm. Um, so I think we've got another verse to look at as well it's uh, James 1 verse 2 to 6 And who want to read it? Who want to read it? Can't you read it? Look okay, out my goofy translation. <laughs> <laughs> um, two to six was it? Yeah. Sure. Um, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think that's... It's kind of... something to think about of being fortunate when stuff comes your way like that. Um, it's, all, it's really hard to kind of say if something bad happens, how can you kind of be fortunate that it's mm. happened? How can you... Uh, how can you like have joy in that sort of situation? And again, going back to like being put through this furnace and this process, it's like like this is happening to you just to kind of be stronger and be closer to God during this time. And whatever situation, I th- we all would, we're all going through different journeys just now, um, and we all have different encounters and do different things. And uh, everything that we go through. <clears throat> are refining us as a person and uh, the people around us I think 
are also a factor to this, how they kind of shape and mould us as well. Um, and I think that's why it's so important to be doing things like this. And like at the start was sharing your highs and lows, um, to know what stuff you're going through so we can help you and so we can know that there's people around us kind of there to like bounce stuff off of and mm. uh, kind of comfort us as well. Mm. Um, and being in the furnace to start off with, um, we're not in there to be broken and we're not there to be destroyed. Um, I think all the things that go into a furnace to start off with are all kind of valuable things to start mm. anyway. Um, they've all got one thing in common that they're there to be moulded into something better. And uh, God sees us so much valuable than gold and silver or anything else that goes into something like that. And uh, another thing is like, you, you see like a rock, like the, there's a gold refiner, he's got a bit of rock. He knows there's something valuable inside there. And he knows the only way to get into that sort of precious stone is to put it through this furnace. And sometimes we have to go through these sort of lows and down situations to get out the other end and uh, get all these sort of bad stuff that's clung on to us, um, off us. And uh, yeah, I think it's just the fact that like, there's something valuable to start off with in the first place. And uh, no matter what struggle or situation you're in, and what situation you get put in, you're not in there to be destroyed. Like God, God's grace won't allow you to do that. Mm. He won't put you into those situations where there's no sort of end to go to. Um, but you're in there to be strengthened and uh, by being strengthened, we've become such a valuable part of God's plan. And uh, just to kind of end there, it's just you're put through this and you're strengthened and at the end of it, you're such a valuable thing. And you don't just kind of be put up in a mountain place for people to see. Um, you're there for people to go and look at and you're there to kind of help, like the samurai sword, it was a bit of steel and once it was put through this pressures and all these, uh, all the heat and stuff, it was there to be used at the end of it. Mm. And uh, I think that's kind of what I want to end up. And if anyone wants to share mm. anything they've heard from that. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the main sort of thing I was thinking about over the week. I started off with just kind of what does refine mean? And then I've ended up just writing about 40 <laughs> pages on my notebook at work. Mm. It's quite a, it's quite distracting actually when you're at work. And you've got something on fire in your head. Like you're like, I just want to like, like learn more about it and stuff. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's not a normal thing for me to kind of sit down and share everything. But mm -hmm. like, it's, you get quite a buzz when you're like. Mm -hmm reading into it and like I was writing stuff down this today so hopefully I've got some sort of message across. No, no, it's brilliant. Yeah. Thank you for that. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um yeah, does anyone have any kind of sort of thoughts on that at all? I mean I know one thing for me that um when you were asking about whether you thought it was kind of just like a, a one off sort of, you know, you go through it, you go through the process and then you're kinda of out the other end and then that's kind of it. You know, um, one thing that I got read, that I found really helpful was kind of, um, I think sometimes we think about life kind of being a bit like this, you know, you kind of, it's up and it's down, it's up and it's down. And I think in reality, you know, you think it's kind of, you go through an up season, you go through a down season. And I think in reality, both kind of happening at once, you know, there's kind of this idea of kind of, you've got battles that are going on, but at the same time, you've got blessings that are going on at the same time. And the two are actually happening, you know, in parallel with each other it's not you're going through one and then one tap gets turned off and then you're on the other one you know both kind of happening at the same time so I think you know um like you were sort of kind of saying you know there is that blessing kind of in the in the battle as well even you know if it can be hard to look at sometimes mm -hmm. yeah and I guess it's a case of like I mean 
it might only be till like much much further on in time when mm-hmm. you get i mean you're probably not going to understand everything what why you've gone through everything why everything happened but for some of those things it's not going to be until so far forward in time where you maybe get glimpses of oh i I can actually see why that happened now Mm -hmm. i mean there'll be some things which we can never explain but for some things it's only looking back when you see yeah oh i mean that was not good but it allowed me to do this it allowed this to happen Mm -hmm. and oh my goodness how much better am i now taking this path than that path which was the one i wanted at the time but maybe this was Mm -hmm. the better way um one of the things they said in the last alpha um, video, the last talk was on how and why do I pray? Um, and it was um, a quote from Corey Ten Boon, who is, um, she was saying that when you're like going through like a dark tunnel um, and the lights have gone off and you're, you're, you're in a train, you're in a train going through the tunnel and the lights have all been turned off. So you don't know where you are, you can't see anything. Uh, that's not when you then decide to kind of like bail like jump out of the train and try and like find your own way that's just when you you trust the person who's driving the train even though you can't see anything Mm -hmm. you just wait and you trust so it's kind of that kind of in that refining process Mm -hmm. that you kind of still have okay i i don't understand what's going on here these struggles that i'm dealing with trying to do the best thing and it's kind of just that trust that when you get to that end point and can look back you can kind of see that it was worth it and that you were trusting in the right thing to bring you through it mm-hmm. yeah that, that's like um <clears throat> if you don't know how gold becomes like a gold item at the end of it and you go to that refiner's little shed for the first time and you see him picking up this up and just throwing it into the fire you're going to be like what, are you what doing? on earth are you doing? <laughs> um, but I think it's that control in the refiner and that uh, once you see it for the first time you've you know mm. that he's in mm. control and you know it doesn't look very it doesn't look like a good idea to throw in the fire. Mm. <clears throat> but it's you know it's gonna be something good in the end. And also, sometimes you don't know the process. No. Um, sometimes you're at a situation, like you said, you don't. It's not until you look back, mm. and you're like, "Oh, okay, now I can understand that this this time kind of got away all this bad stuff, and that time got away all that bad stuff, and then you slowly got to the end, and slowly got to that sort of like end product product. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it is just trusting him and and having, you know, asking God in in when you don't understand like what's his perspective on stuff, and um, similar to what Grant was saying about the the um, seeing it as a road like kind of ups and downs. I I can't remember who it was, but I remember someone once saying about if we look to it from an outsider's perspective or from God's perspective, and um, you'd see your life as like a spiral going up so like every time you'd hit something and you're like oh no but actually and then you go around you go hit something the same you think it's the same thing again and it's actually um the process you're going through but you are still going up you're still um growing and you're journeying and you're um it's almost like an onion there's different levels and you're always getting upgraded um when you're walking with god but um, sometimes we don't have that perspective. We're just like, oh no, I'm hitting that thing again, or oh no. Mm. But actually, what he's doing is he's refining you, and you're whatever, getting rid of the stuff. And but if you saw it, it would be just this journey of going up and up and up. So mm. yeah, I guess just having that perspective and trusting God knows what He's doing mm-hmm. in our lives. Yeah, I think uh, time's a factor as well. And um, I was looking at, I was I was just looking at different things that get like refined and stuff like that. Um, it's been a big uh, topic of the week for me. I've been waking up, learning about stuff like it's refined, and going to sleep, learning about different stuff. Uh, mm. But it was like like a diamond as well, mm. and I was just reading about up about it, and like the bit of carbon gets pressured, like two hundred feet below the ground, but it's been pressured for like three billion years mm. until it becomes that sort of 
like beautiful diamond. Mm. I think it's yeah. like the time factor that kind of, even though it may feel like a lifetime, you're getting these struggles. You just know. I think you need to know that there's going to be some sort of joy at the end mm. of it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that spiral idea for mm-hmm. yeah. someone who's played a bit of the old Pokemon and played too many video <laughs> games. The idea of like your faith leveling up. It's like. <laughs> You grew to level, level 43. <laughs> <laughs> cool. that, but yeah. it's really, Help like, me. I made a joke of that point. It's actually a wonderful point. It wasn't mine, but I... I <laughs> <laughs> you brought it to the table. <laughs> yeah. You didn't me. bring it. We wouldn't have heard it. So it's yours. I think, I think uh, it's quite hard to kind of translate it into, like, a everyday mm. thing when you're looking back at these things and it's like the wrath of God upon the whole city and stuff like that. It's like, how does that kind (laughs) of transfer into kind of your own life? And it's just like, that's kind of how I was trying to join it on. Mm -hmm. But it is pretty, pretty powerful stuff back in the, back in the Mm -hmm. Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Mm I think one of the things that was cool, even though it came up in that James verse as well, I think as well, it's kind of having that perspective that we spoke about, that kind of understanding of, okay, what's God's like, you know, he's not, he's kind of not doing this to be a jerk, you know, it's, yeah. um, you know, I'm not in this because he's not going to waste this hard time that I'm going through, he's not going to waste this thing that I'm kind of going through, but I think also as well, the, that wisdom point as well, sort of, you know, kind of being like, you know, you can ask when, you know, at any time, you know, when you're in that kind of spot, whether it's kind of, God, you know, God give me wisdom for this, or if it's kind of, you know, something like if, it was, if your colleague at work, that situation of it was kind of like a long running saga, like, God give me wisdom, how do with this guy, <laughs> you know, uh, um, so I think that's kind of quite a powerful kind of combination, I think one having that kind of perspective you know of kind of like okay what's this what's this for that god's you're still good even though stuff sucks at the moment and um, you can use it for something good and um, but then also as well kind of you know god help me in this as well i think that's kind of having that when those tricky times come it's good mm-hmm. i don't know how charles ends it just kind of naturally ends <laughs>